How's it going guys? So today we are gonna be taking images, throwing them in Blender and distorting them with texture nodes and with glass. So this is gonna be done in two different ways. We're gonna be adding effects to the images straight to the image with texture nodes, using textures to isolate the effect so you can see the effect and the image, using empties to control where the effect is actually happening on the image. And then we're also gonna be putting some glass in front of the image and using that to add some effects like I said, this is a series that I'm uploading on YouTube, so you can check the playlist below for more videos like this. And there are a few exclusive tutorials on my Patreon on this series, and it's the end of the year, so you can get a discount on annual memberships if you want to join the Patreon. A lot of really cool stuff. So if you want to check all that out, there's a link in the description, and let's learn how to do this. All right, so we are gonna first need an image. You can use any image you want. I downloaded a couple on uh, Unsplash for free. So what you can do is you can go here to image, mesh plane and then right here where it says shader choose emission and then we're going to go here to my desktop and i just have a bunch of random uh, images and i'm going to go ahead uh, with this one right here and then we're going to go here i'm going to just go to the material preview and scale it up and then i'm also going to control a and apply that scale so now we have uh, image faces are really fun to use on this uh, this effect, but you can do this with literally any image you want. Also, nature scenes are really cool with this. Um, so with that being said, let's head to the shader editor and show how to achieve this. So what you can do is actually delete the principle and just drive this straight to the surface and you're not going to get any uh, color distortion. Sometimes with this effect, you do want the image to be emissive. And so you can use that emission like I showed you. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead. I'm going to take this. I'm going to hit control T with the node wrangler add-on or just get a mapping node and a texture coordinate and we can throw some interesting effects on this. So first, you're gonna wanna throw the effect right here on this line. You can here if you want, I'm gonna throw it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a wave texture and it is just gonna completely distort it. And so what we can do is we can get a mix color node and plug this mapping node into B and what that's going to do is create a bypass. So this factor right here is gonna say, if you bring the factor to a factor of one, it's as if um, this texture was never applied. If you bring it to a factor of zero, it's as if uh, it's the, this texture is completely affecting it. And so you can kind of say, how much of this effect do I want to affect things? So each texture is gonna do uh, its own unique set of things. So let's say I'm gonna go here from sine to triangle or triangle to saw. Saw is really cool because it keeps the kind of a solid edge. So maybe I want something like this. Well, you can bring that factor in just a little bit and you get something kind of weird. One, one, one really cool effect is go from bands to rings, X to spherical. And then you can use your mapping node to move the texture around. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this mapping node, put it here. And then I'm gonna bring my location over until the middle of the circle is on uh, the face. And then you can also, I need to, you can go to the scale and kind of fix a little bit of the warping. You can see kind of like it's an oval. So you can just fix that in the mapping node. Uh, now we have a circle and then you can make the placement here. So now you have a really cool effect. You can bring the scale up like that. And then you can bring that factor in so you can just get a small portion of this effect or you can get it completely. So there's a lot of different things you can do uh, with this effect. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna delete the wave texture in the mapping and I'm gonna use a noise texture. So just go ahead and plug the mapping into the, the vector and I'm gonna plug factor into A. And so now we can distort this image with a noise texture. But one thing I wanna do is like, I don't want uh, the noise texture to affect the whole thing. Maybe I want the strength of the effect to be about that much, but I don't want it to be everywhere. So what you can do is get a color ramp and then I'm gonna bring things down like this. I'm gonna bring it down like this. And what you can do is you can get another noise texture. I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, just keeping it um, connected to this whole mapping setup. You can get another texture, plug that into the factor and what this is going to do is say, if I bring the white in, it's going to isolate some of that. So when I bring this in like this, we're reducing down that texture to a certain point of the uh, image. And if I switch this over to 4D, 
you can say where that can happen. And maybe I can bring this back a little bit, bring this in. But what it's going to do is say only some of the noise texture distort the image and then other parts of the image stay. And that can get you some really cool effects. We're like, okay, we can do something like this. And again, this, this works with any texture. So like that looks pretty wild. But say, say instead of uh, a noise texture, we can use a Voronoi texture, plug mapping here, plug uh, that there. And so maybe we can bring the roughness down, bring the scale up. Now we have a Voronoi texture affecting things. Any texture for this will work. I'm gonna delete these guys, and then we're gonna go back, uh, and I'm gonna use the Voronoi texture again. Again, notice how uh, these are ovals. It really should be perfect circles, and you can always fix that with another mapping node, putting it right about there, uh, right after the Voronoi. So one thing we can use is uh, the fact that we have different so uh, slots. So if you use color, it's not going to distort the image in the same way. Notice this, because there is no gradient. So if I look at distance here, and I just hit Control, Shift, Click, um, you can see how there's a gradient. That is going to distort the image within a gradient. It's going to be basically how much of that image is going to be distorted based on the gradient. If you use color, um, there is no gradient. If, if this was black and white, again, there'd still be no gradient. It's just color. It's solid. It's like a... Uh, so you can actually play with that as well. Say maybe we can bring up that scale like this. Maybe you can even distort uh, the wave here doing something like this, again, keeping it square, bring up the scale, bring up this effect, and you can do a lot of really cool things with this effect, and it's really awesome. And again, here in the mapping node, if you made a second one right after the, right before the Voronoi, you can play with the X location of those squares and have some control over what we're doing. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, switch this over to distance. I'm gonna make it something like this. What if I want to control um, a very specific location of this effect? Well, we can go back to using this factor slider and we can use a object. So if I go here and add a plane axis, you can see I can hit G and control him. I can use an empty to control the position of the effect. So if I go ahead and I get a color ramp so I can control the gradient texture that I add to it. I'm gonna hit Control T, and because we want an object to control it, we're gonna use the object coordinate. In the object, we'll add the empty, and then we'll plug color right into color ramp. So that's, right now it's just using linear. So if I move my empty, it does that. If I change the um, linear to something like B spline, you can actually adjust um, the fade of this effect. I'll go back to ease. Now, I actually want to use spherical, and then I'm going to flip my color ramp so that the effect is on the inside, not the outside. And if I hit S, we now have an ability to control the effect. So if I switch my Voronoi to 4D, I kind of want to play with what is within those circles. There we go. I like that. And then... Again, you can uh, play with the fade. So if I go from ease to B spline, it will fade it out a little bit more gracefully. And then again, we can click on the empty and move the effect around. You can scale up the empty and that will scale up the size of the effect. So now we have something like that and it's pretty awesome. And again, um, we're using the Voronoi texture, so we can do anything we want. We can bring the randomness up, so maybe it's something like that. And now it creates this fun little effect on your scene. The details are kind of uh, limitless. Where's my effect? Here we go. Uh, the details are kind of uh, limitless, and what you can do, we can go here to Chevy Chev, you can go here to Manhattan, you can do uh, Minkowski. It's kind of breaking at a certain point. Uh, you can do F2, play with the randomness, play with the detail, roughness, everything uh, can be edited to being whatever you want. So this is how to distort images using 
uh, texture nodes within the image, let's go ahead and do um, some like actual glass effects. Also, you can have some fun and distort people's faces uh, like that as well. It's really funny. Um, anyway, let's look at glass. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of these effects and just go back to the regular image. Actually, we can just keep the image uh, without any of those nodes. So we have this face. What I'll do now is I'm going to go here to the cycles view, bring my world brightness down to black. I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to get a plane and I'm going to move it up just a little bit and then scale it to fill. And then we're going to give it a new material and I'm going to make it transmission. So there we go. You can now see our image and it's a little foggy and that's because we have roughness on. So you can bring up the roughness as well. Really simple effect. Uh, but we have access to this principle. Now, in this case, the distortion is going to come from the bump node. So if you get a bump node, plug it here, plug a noise texture. We'll hit Control T, use the object coordinate, and then I'll get a color ramp to control things. Plug factor here, plug color into height. And then if you bring up that distance, it's going to now distort it. And then if you bring up your color ramp, it's going to uh, zero out that effect a little bit, just like we did earlier. But in this case, it is with glass. 4D obviously will let you animate this effect. And then on top of that, we can get a another color ramp. In fact, we'll just do, I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, duplicate it, just make sure the noise texture is connected. You can plug this into the roughness and this is, uh, the difference between doing this with glass and doing this within the shader nodes is you now have the ability to add roughness. Uh, you can actually play with the roughness that's on the image. I think I want to do it on this side. There we go. I'm trying to figure out where this effect is happening. There we go. So now you can actually play with roughness and these colors are going to tell you how much of that roughness is going to be present on the image. Now you can play with roughness. Now, it's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and actually switch. I'm going to join those. I'm going to get a Voronoi. There's an effect that I really love, and it's very simple. I'm going to plug color into uh, this node that I created here. I'm going to switch randomness to zero. And then you can see how we have these squares. Um, and then if I maybe bring this over to white, it will make the squares a little bit more blurry. You can see super simple effect, um, but bring my color ramp over. But if you play with the filter width just a little bit, it's going to create these lines. So now you have like that. So the filter width at max is going to create that. It's not my favorite, but if you bring down that filter width, you now get um, these line effect and makes this really interesting looking glass. And if I switch this over to 4D, you can play with um, the blurriness. You can also play with how much blurriness there is. And then you can make some more blurry than others. So this is a really, really powerful effect and super simple. I mean, the, the Voronoi effect is really, really fun. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. Now, last thing I want to do is show you how to do some an RGB effect with uh, the glass. And so we'll go back here to the main view. I'm going to delete the image that we had. And I'm going to add some text. And then I'm just going to make it say whatever I want. I'm going to say LO enter ST. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, change my uh, alignment. And I'm going to go ahead and change my font. And then you can just meet bring them together. And then the last thing, if I were to go look, there's nothing there. We need to get a emission node on this text and then you can bring it up and it's just the same. But specifically I'm using text because if you do black and white on the effect I'm about to show you, it looks really cool. So if you click on your glass and just delete everything, we're gonna get a glass BSDF node. Bring up the roughness so we can see it, cool. I'm gonna get in a add shader. We're going to duplicate this glass BSDF and then we're going to get one more and plug it here. So make sure your setup looks like this. 
we're going to go and make this one. If you click on RGB, you can make it pure red and then green and then blue. And the order of it is uh, I've found to, to be important. So now we have this. We can get a noise texture. We get a bump node. And then we're going to need to get a color ramp right here. So if we plug him here, plug him into the height, and then we're also going to get a noise texture, put it in the roughness of all of these guys. And I'll just leave it like this for now. And then we're going to plug the bump also into all of these. And so what's going to happen that now is if we bring up the distance, it's going to do the noise texture is going to distort like it did before. Uh, but we haven't created an RGB effect yet. That's going to be with the IOR. So the IOR of this top one, make it uh, 1.45. We're going to make this one 1.5 and we're going to make this one 1.55. If you bring the black over, you'll start to see, okay, we have an RGB effect happening. So I'm just going to bring it over a little bit, this color ramp here, and that's going to kind of smooth them. And if you want this RGB effect to be more dramatic, just lengthen the distance between these numbers. So he'll just stay there. So maybe we'll do uh, 1.4 and this one be 1.6. Now that RGB effect is a little bit more dramatic and then you can bring this over and blend that uh, together. Now let's go ahead and play with this uh, color ramp here to make some interesting effects. So maybe we'll bring up the scale of this and then we'll just get our color ramp to do something like that and then the the effect will be way more evident if you plug the noise texture into the color ramp that has the roughness on it and then you just bring these two together so something like this if you zero out that roughness to where the effect is happening it can look pretty cool and then this black portion right here means no roughness just bring that up enough so that we have that roughness back. And then if you move your camera around, you can get some of that RGB effect happening. In fact, you probably just bring the glass up some. There we go. And then now we have a really interesting RGB effect on our text. So something like this, you can bring down the strength of the effect you can also bring down on the color ramp up there how much roughness is taking place. And so let's say maybe we can just bring the tops of this to be something like this. Here we go. This is the effect I was looking for. And there we go. We now have a really cool effect. I'm going to maybe bring the roughness down closer to black. And then we can bring this up a little bit more if we want. But this is the effect the scale of the noise texture is going to be affected here. Um, but it looks, it looks really cool. And then if you move your camera, you get an even crazier effect. So that is how this is created. So there you guys go. Hopefully this gave you some ideas on how to take images uh, using Blender like it's Photoshop and distort it and add some really cool things. And the cool thing about uh, this being done in Blender is all these effects are animatable and loopable and you can make some really cool art with it. So if you want to check this out, play with it, uh, you can check out my Patreon for some of the bonus content on the series. Check out the playlist below for more of the series here on YouTube and I'll see you guys in the next one.